hello everyone welcome to anus classroom so you will undoubtedly have to collect data for your mba project right 90% of the time we will be undertaking field study type of projects and topics will be selected such that uh, we won't be able to interview or collect data from all of the population of our uh, study right so therefore we will be definitely resorting to taking samples of data so that we can complete our project work on time so the question that comes to most of our mind uh, is how many samples we should collect correct so should we pick just 10 will 10 samples be enough will we have to go for a hundred maybe is 50 samples good enough right and as you all know we also have to mention that sample size in our uh, synopsis also while we are sending like uh, approximately how many samples we are trying uh, hoping to collect if that sample size is not a reasonable amount then also chances are there that your synopsis or your yeah your synopsis might get rejected so how will we find out what is a good sample size for our topic so this question is something which bugs not only us newbies who are doing our first MBA project but even experienced researchers have this issue of finding the ideal sample size to uh, what you can say validate their research findings. If it is a research study which is done on uh, less number of samples than ideal then that research study is not deemed accurate right. Uh, if you guys are aware I am not sure. Uh, there was a big controversy regarding COVID medicines created by Patanjali in the uh, two years back. And the reason why there was such a protest was because the study was not conducted on enough number of samples. And they just uh, gave out um, that it is 100% successful or something like that. And it was a big issue, right? Uh, so similarly, such issues should not come to our research. So we have to make sure our sample sizes are good enough. So in this video, we will try to understand from our MBA project perspective, how we can fix our sample sizes. And again, let me stress on it. It is very important because we have to mention our sample size and our sampling method in our synopsis. Okay. And uh, again, if we are not quoting a reasonable number in the sample size and a reasonable method for collection of the sample data, our synopsis has a chance of getting rejected just because of that. Okay. So what shall we do? Okay. Before we can decide on our sample size, we have to understand the population size. So suppose say in the previous uh, examples, I had taken a synopsis topic as customer satisfaction towards Akshaya centers in the Trishur district. So anybody who is availing, um, what you can say, availing Akshaya services in the district of Trishur is our sample population size. So though uh, Akshaya centers offer services starting from newborn babies to even dead people, uh, newborn babies or dead men do not go to Akshaya center, right? We can say uh, maybe if it is a child, then definitely it is their parents who take them. And more than the child, it is the parents' opinion that matters. Similarly, in case of dead people, it is their relatives who go there to get their death certificate or something like that, right? So, uh, avoiding the extreme ranges, we can say uh, maybe like around 15 to um, maybe 80, 85, whoever is alive, right? Or all the people belonging to that particular age group who is there in Trishur district is our population. Now, it is very difficult for us to exactly point out what the size of that population is, right? If you search in Google also, you will be getting an old data when it was last updated. Since then, many people would have go, go uh, but you know, say born, many people might have died, all those things, right? So in this case, it, we are not exactly sure what our population size is. So then how will we select our sample? In some cases, our population size might be known. Like say, for example, if your project is regarding, um, mm, let's say, um, let's say customers of a particular bank, how the customers are satisfied for a particular bank, then we can be sure more or less the people who go in there would be the bank's customers, right? Or customer, yeah. So if you can somehow get how many customers are there for a particular bank, then definitely you will have a good estimate of a sample, sorry, population size. So that is the population. We need to know whether we know, accurately know or we do not know the population size. Only then we can decide which formula to use to calculate sample size. Did I just say formula? <laughs> yes, guys, there are formulas to calculate sample sizes and we will get to that. And the formula differs if we know the sample uh, population size or we do not know. There are different formulas for both the cases. So the next thing is once we know our population size, we need to have an idea of how much so suppose say customer satisfaction okay uh, so 
definitely we will sum it up to a single number that is the mean satisfaction that is what we'll say that this is the satisfaction level maybe 50 percent satisfied something like that right so that is the population mean that we are talking about correct suppose say all the people clubbed together in Trishur district if we are to establish or uh, represent the satisfaction level of all the Trishur district people then we will be summing it up into a single number and the ideal uh, what you can say ideal uh, indicator for that would be the population mean now definitely we are not taking our population mean we are not surveying each and every person in Trishur district we are only taking sample so the sample will have its own mean so how much difference can you accommodate between the sample mean and the population's mean that is what is called as margin of error it is also known as confidence interval okay interval is the word here confidence interval it is there is something else known as confidence level it is not to be what you can say confused with this confidence interval if you guys are getting confused then just think of this as margin of error only which is a much more easier to uh, understand term than confidence interval so how much deviation in the sample mean from the population mean are we willing to suffer because of this sampling that we are undertaking that is what margin of error means so let's say um, if suppose we are doing this uh, survey on the entire people of Trishur district then suppose let's say it is 65 percent that um, or uh, let's say um, what you can say yeah we we may uh, be like we are ideally in ideal case maybe it is uh, six, uh, what you can say 66 percent or something like that is the average uh, satisfaction level let us assume um, and you are but you are doing sampling on a sample only sample of maybe 100 people or 200 people only you are doing okay so and in that sample you found that 65 percent of the people were satisfied okay so let's say you are taking three percent as margin of error that is up to three percent you can have difference so in that case you can very well state that the total population mean would be somewhere between 62 and 67 percentage so 65 is what you got as your samples mean so and your margin of error was three person means actual population mean would lie somewhere between 62 that is three down and three up okay 62 and 68 percentage sorry 62 and yeah 68 percentage this is a typo okay 67 percentage i've written over here it is a typo it has to be 68 percentage okay so you can say somewhere between 62 and 68 percent of Trishur car okay will be satis is satisfied with with the uh, akshaya center services i hope you understood the concept behind this uh, margin of error the next thing that you have to have an idea on before deciding on your sample size is something called as confidence level okay the, uh, and it is a little bit difficult concept uh, definitely but uh, since we are limiting the discussion in this particular video to finding out the sample size for our MBA project I would say just keep your confidence level as 95 percent okay that is this uh, that is the norm that is what is normally kept even by uh, good big researchers unless it is a mission critical thing uh, generally we keep uh, we go for 95 percent confidence level so that itself i would suggest you also keep as 95 percentage you can keep anywhere between 90 95 or 99 percentage 99 percent confidence level means whatever you're finding is you are 99 percent sure that this is the right thing okay 95 is good enough number 90 i would say is a little bit lower so um, whatever your confidence level is it is a, it corresponds to something called as a z score z score is not a new concept to us we have been accustomed to z scores right from our first semester quantitative analysis onwards so for 95 percent uh, wherever you have to substitute the confidence interval uh, sorry confidence level value z score value you can add, uh, very well substitute 1.96 so that is why I'm saying you can just keep it as this. okay 95% is good enough you also take it as 95% confidence level. So what happens or what it means to have 95% confidence level in case you guys are still not clear. So when you put a confidence level and confidence interval these two things margin of error and confidence level these two things when you club together and read what it means is that you are 95% sure that uh, whatever uh, yeah, yeah you are 95% sure that the satisfaction level of uh, services offered by Akshaya Center in our case is between 62 and 68 percentage that is what it means okay you got 65 percent sample mean right so 
विद कॉन्फिडेंस इंटरवल सॉरी कॉन्फिडेंस लेवल एज नाइंटी फाइव परसेंटेज वॉट इट मीन्स इज योर नाइंटी फाइव परसेंट श्योर दैट द सेटिसफैक्शन लेवल ऑफ त्रिशूर कार लाइज एनी वेयर बिटवीन सिक्सटी टू एंड सिक्सटी एट परसेंटेज ओके सो आई होप दिस पार्ट इज क्लियर द नेक्स्ट थिंग दैट यू हैव टू नो इज वेरियंस अगेन वेरियंस मीन्स यू डोंट नो हाउ मच हाउ मच वेरियंस यू कैन एक्सपेक्ट ओके स्टैंडर्ड डिविएशन एंड थिंग्स लाइक दैट अगेन If you are unsure, if you don't know how much variance to expect, just keep it as zero point five. So that uh, if you are keeping zero point five as your variance, then you will get a good enough large group of samples, uh, sample numbers. So that uh, you know there won't be much variance. Okay. So now, how uh, can we calculate our ideal sample size? Right. So we have this formula. You can do it the old-fashioned way by applying your um, Z score that is one point nine six. If you are taking confidence level as ninety five percentage, and if you know the population level, then good enough. You can uh, use the formula for the finite sample size. If you do not know the sample size, sorry, population size, you will have to use the formula for infinite sample size. Okay, so P is the percentage of population, and C is the confidence level. So this is quite difficult, right? Um, I don't think anybody of us will be interested in calculating it this way. Not to worry. If it feels like a lot, do not worry. We can do all these calculations very easily with sample size calculators, which are available online. You just do a simple Google search, and you will get multitudes of uh, websites which offer to calculate the sample sizes for you. What you have to give them as input is whether you know population size or not. If you know, give them the population size. Otherwise, leave it blank. Okay? You will have to give you give them your confidence interval as well as confidence level, and you can set your variance again as zero point five, and they'll give you the uh, sample size that you will have to uh, take up in order to get accurate results. Okay? So, in case you have got any questions on this topic, um, definitely. I will be more than happy to help you out. Just let me know in the comment section below. In case you are wondering uh, which online calculator to use, I will leave a link to one of my favorite online sample size calculators, which is uh, which I feel is fairly good enough. So either you can use that or you can search in Google and find for uh, yourself any uh, sample size calculator. If you are still having confusion on any of the parameters that we are dis we have discussed. uh most of the online calculators do give you an idea of what each of those metrics mean okay so you can go through their uh, what you can say glossary and you can fill in as required thank you so much for tuning into anus classroom in case you want to get the mmpp1 guideline from igno you can scan this qr code which you are seeing on your screen and uh, it will take you there and if you want to get the online sample size calculator which i prefer and i use then you can scan this particular qr code and it will take you to that particular link okay so thank you so much happy project work until i see you in the next session bye bye